Welcome to I Love Stocks. Today I want to talk about four tickers and good morning everybody. The early bird always gets his worm. But I have four I just want to mention today and that's Boeing, Walmart, and we got Nile, and we've got Tesla. So I'm excited about all these plus many others. We're in a very bullish market right now and it's, I mean, it's an easy trader's market if you just have a little bit of patience. Look for the turnarounds and buy these dips. Because I think 2021 is going to be an immaculate year. doesn't matter who's president. We've just got over a huge, or not over. I do believe it will be over in 2021, that is COVID. And when that happens, it's going to be like a springboard. This economy is set up to where we're going to have a new economy. There's going to be new intervention, new ideas, new marketing. It's just going to be an overwhelming sight to see in the next coming up five years the auto industry is going to take off healthcare, and we've got the small caps that are going to bounce up good in 2021 we've got the dow going to reach all-time highs and i do believe the s p will follow it because earnings have been good so that's how i'm excited i am about 2021 and we're off to a good start at the end of this year in a way Pre-election alerts were very good, and we hit a, a triple bottom on the yearly. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of look at the SPY right now and see where we are on the SPY. Just kind of get a, a hinker into where we are. And I'll put this up to the yearly. I've done very well here lately, and it's I think it's just because I've been a little bit more focused. And I'm going to go ahead and put this yearly up on here right now. Focus is everything. I'm going to clear this up, just kind of get a picture of where we are today. You notice we almost hit that double top right up in here at that 364.38. So that's the resistance that we got to break. And the supports, we're going to pull back to probably right in here. I'm thinking at 357.77 with a low support right down here at 352.94 to hold. You see, we topped it up right in here. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to erase this just a little bit. I'm going to do something. I want to fine tune this so I can get this right, right there. Yeah, there it is at 352.40. I guess that was pretty close. Then you got a little pivot point in here, right about here. A little pivot point channel. It could pull back into that. Now the resistance to break is going to be this here. And then we've got a, a nice equilibrium right in here. This will bring us to the 20. We got one low strong buy down in here, just in case we do have a, a very bad day. But we do have this triple bottom that could be in play, or we could run into this pivot point area, this first support. Now, you notice it does have lower highs, but if we break out and break above this resistance level right in, well, let's go to the previous high right here. And this is the resistance that we're going to have to break. There are going to be two of them. This one right here at 361.55. Then my extended trend lines are telling me right in here at 362.76 with pullback support, a double bottom at 358.42, and that's going to be the SPY. Strong scenario buy if it does decide to knife. It's going to be this 352.50 area, or I might take it to the one minute. Yeah, we started bouncing up here, and we've had a nice little pullback after hours with a higher low, so we could retrace and, and try to break that resistance these next resistances on up here. So let's go with this 20. Oh, you can stop this video at any time. Write these numbers down. But these are the resistance channels. Support channels is going to be 355.05 to 355.82. We do have some spots in here I like. I want to see it hold this area right in here between 357.46 and 358. I need to put that in here. Right there. 357.40 to 358.42. And break the resistance channel. Go long to break 362.78. And that is the SPY. So play the dips. You know, this was a good time to play the dip. Also right in here, we've got the dip. Play it. If it pulls back a little bit more, but if we can create a higher, higher low... And break resistance here at 262.78 will be smooth sailing. 
Now the four tickers I do want to talk about are going to be Boeing, Walmart, Nile, and Tesla. Boeing's coming out <clears throat> here. Let me see if I can find it. There's the Boeing website, but this is what I'm excited about today. FFA is poised to clear Boeing 737 MAX to fly again. This came out today. Today. So, yeah. And the, and the stock itself has really popped up. So let's go ahead and pull that up here and we'll look at the yearly. And I did call, we did call, we did call breakout in the room. Mr. Wall Street's been on this buying the dips. So he's accumulated a lot of uh, stocks and he's excited because he's finally got the breakout that he's been looking for on this. His theory is patience. If you're in a good stock, will eventually pay off and, and, and his theory has been working very well. He just buys the good tickers and they just pop up and then when they pull back he buys a little bit more and he accumulates and then all of a sudden you know payday comes in and he's very happy and that's the kind of way i trade too i like to play you know the pullbacks and buy into the dips and bring my costs down a little bit and i did that with walmart yesterday and i'll talk to you about how i did that with walmart as you know i'm not a very experienced options trader but i have got a lot better with it here in the past two or three months so let's go ahead and put the Boeing up here. We did break some resistance after hours. We did come up here to right about, oh, I'm going to go ahead and clear this chart up because I've been really chalking this up on supports and resistances. See how they, how they kind of hold right in here. We got a support level right here at 193. We got another one right in here. See, I'm looking for places of reversals. Places of reversals. One creates a resistance. One creates a support. So I'm moving my way up. And I'm going to keep doing this until I find some equilibrium. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing this right down here. Why? Because we had this candle here. We had the body of this candle. And we had the wick touch right up in here. Then I have another support level right in here. Where we had the ascending triangle breakout. Into close. Now this thing can pull back to this support right here. And be a solid support at 202.50. That's $11 dip from right here, or it could break out to previous highs. Now, to find that, let's go ahead and chalk this in right here. Because this is going to be the resistance that we got to break. I'll show you what I'm talking about. When I'm looking, and I'm looking for a resistance, I'm looking for a body of that candle. I don't give a crap about the wick. It's that body where all that mustard is. And if you learn... To draw these trend lines off the body, your accuracy will improve by at least 50%. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So we're going to go ahead and bring this over to the yearly. Now we've got a resistance to break. We're going to top it out. Let's take this thing to 230. I know it sounds crazy, but here we got a double top right here. And this is we're going to have a little resistance right here right around the 222.58 area. So that pullback support, these are the two resistances. Our targets are long, and then we can finally get into the gap fill, and that's going to be a hard resistance at 237. So we got 22, 258, 230.56, and 237.53 into the year of 2021 long. And then you got a low support, and we'll pull that up on the 20 day. And this is Boeing. That low support strong buy is going to be right here. And we get a knife and pull back to that area, get in the trade. Guarantee it, we can take it back up. You got three nice, real nice places right in here where they could pull back and be very strong buys. Pathetically strong buy in this area right in here. But for now, no lower than 20250. Keep it above that $200 range and we'll be bullish to run it up to them other resistance. That's Boeing. The next one's going to be Walmart. Let's take a look at what I did with Walmart yesterday. What a trip. I got in Walmart right in here, right into before close. I think it was right about in right about into here is where I got into Walmart. Right at 153.01. And I was pretty excited that it kept running it up all the way up to 154. Then we had that pre-market high of 157. And like any other case, and I'll show you on the yearly chart here. And I believe there was something else involved in this pullback. 
But it seemed like I should have took a better look at this. Earnings, every time it has earnings. You know, this one was pretty good, but it did pull back. And we pulled back a little bit there. And same thing happened here. We had that pullback. But the, we're still going up higher lows. Walmart, I think, is going to go up higher. I really think Walmart is undervalued. I, I just have to say it. I, I've always thought it was undervalued, and I still think it's undervalued. So let's go ahead and look at some resistance levels. We did pull back to major support, and it did fail. What I did Friday, I'm going to show you what I did here, or yesterday. Like I said, I got in this trade right in here. Pretty excited about it because we started running up. You know, I was really wanting to cash in. And then we had that crash. And I think this crash happened because of Amazon. We are in a descending pattern right now, but we might be seeing a reversal. But I think Amazon has a has an online pharmacy now, and a lot of CVS and a lot of them other ones pulled back. So I think it, I thought it was a natural pullback, and so I jumped in right in here. I started buying options. I bought you know a few of them, a lot of them, and then I bought some kind of diagonal call, and I didn't know what I got into. Because I've just been buying the calls and the puts and doing very well that way because I'm an ex experienced support and resistance player. I know where to buy them supports and sell at resistance levels. So I started buying, accumulating Walmart down here on the second dip. And then all of a sudden, man, I had that big spike. And I was looking for confirmation to get into the trade right down in here. And this is where I found it, the double bottom. And then I seen that engulfing candle, and that's where I jumped into the trade. It was when it pulled back to right about this area right here on that candle at 149.57. Then she went ahead and run on up, and I was able to go ahead and, and sell everything and then get out with a good trade. But it looks to me like I'm still very bullish on Walmart. And if this 50 crosses up above and breaks this resistance right here at 152.67, .60, we'll go higher. But I do believe that, you know, we can have some pullbacks and play off them dips. And when I'm looking at this, see, I'm looking at these previous highs and these previous lows. And that's where you have like the double confirmation of maybe a triple bottom at 151.49. So I want that to hold. If that doesn't hold, I'm not going to rush in this trade. I've got all my lifetime to trade this trade. I'm just going to look for the right time to get into the trade. And I've got two support levels right here that I like. And these are the two that I'm going to be looking at. I want to keep it in this channel. I want to keep it in these engulfing candles. I want to keep it in a double, triple bottom right in here. Triple top. At least an equilibrium. No lower than 150.73. With that first one right here at 151.49. With a resistance to break at 152.67. To a double top at 152.87. So I'm bullish on Walmart. Nile, a lot of people are in Nile. Nile's had that nice run, earnings, and it pulled back. I love playing earnings plays. I always like to try to, uh, to find a different support level. So let's go to into earnings. Let's go into Nile. I know there's some people that are just factually in love with this stock. I am not. I am not. I'm in love with Tesla not Nile. Nile doesn't build enough cars for me yet. Nile doesn't have its own factory. So to me, Nile is a speculative tra trade that's run on momentum, price over action. That's it. I like the car too. The car is cheaper. That's another catalyst that people want to try to start trading Nile. It's down at a low. It's cheaper stock to buy. Those are my reasons. Everybody has a different reason. I'm in love with Tesla, not Nile. Niles, I was in love with Nile when it was down in this area. So I think Nile has had too, too, too good of a run. And it needs to consolidate back in this channel right in here. It needs to hold, come back to this area right in here. And start creating a channel. I don't think it's going to run up to the moon. I think what we're going to have is going to be like a little little um pattern that's going to squeeze out eventually to the end and we're going to have a nice little bounce 
So let's go to the 20 day where we can get a better look. I want to erase all this. It's starting to get pretty nasty. When I, when I get to a chart that I've had drawn up so many times, that see how it looks so much clearer. I can read it a lot better now. But once I get down to like the minute daily, they look a lot different. We have a support level right here. We have one right here, and we want to keep it in this channel right in here. We're at least a little bit below the $40 area. I love this channel right in here. We have are having lower highs, and I think we can squeeze into about the middle of this channel to a pivot point area. We had a nice little breakout here. I pointed that flag out, and we did break out, but we pulled back. See? But we did find real good support level right in here. I mean, look at how many times we hit this down here. That's a real strong support, just right under $40. So if you see that $40 mark, contemplate. If the momentum's there and the reversal pattern's there, think about that idea right there at $39.76 or right around the $40 area, right here at $40.30. See that? You see where we pulled back on the body of them candles? I tell you, that's the most important thing to me is them bodies where they come down and they just don't quite break it. But the wicks do. So if you do get into that area, you have a fine opportunity to try to get into that between 39.76 and 40.30. And run it back up to this resistance channel. And you can get four or five bucks scalp out of that trade right there. And then eventually, we're going to start building momentum and create a new channel up above here. And that will take you on up to the double top breakout right around 48.80. I like to see a little pullback. I like to see this 50 curve down, kind of smooch up against this 200. And then, my, then and when that squeeze happens, that's my and that and it doesn't fall below that 50 on the 20 day. That's my time to get into the trade. As we keep moving out, hopefully this 50 200 will move up, and we'll squeeze right around there, right around that 40. 40 something and I'm gonna call a pivot point in this channel right here right there so that's gonna be the solid pivot point at 4235 that's where it's really gonna set my alert at to buy we'll set that up real fast now when I get my pullback and I get my alert to that number I'm going to jump in the trade, and that's Nile. And the last one we're going to talk about is going to be my baby Tesla. Yes. Let's go ahead and put that baby in here. I think we're getting ready to reverse again. We had a nice little breakout on it. Off, look at that. I mean, that is just so beautiful. Hit the S&P, so it's got really some uh, excitement going on. I do have a little support level right down here at 435.06 for a reversal buy. Or we could start to reverse here right at this resistance level. See? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we close right down here at seven. So that's a sign to me that we could break resistance right up in here at 445.36. Write that number down. 435.46. That's going to be the resistance that we got to break. And then we take it up to the next resistance level at 448.90. Now, this thing's going to go to 500 before Christmas. If you want to get in on the dip, now's the time. Now's the time. Anything below this number here at 4.3506 is going to be a strong buy in this channel. I want to keep support level back to 420. That's the Elon Musk number, 420. That's the low strong buy. I got three support levels here. We do have a little pivot point in this channel. I always want to dig in there and try to find some equilibrium when I'm charting these things up. And it's kind of kind of choppy, but I think right in here is as good a spot as any. And I'll turn that also into a strong red line for a real strong reversal. Now, I let patience kick in. I don't try to rush myself into any trade. I always wait for the pullbacks. If you had any common sense, look here, we had a big spike right into ours. Look at that. Look at that. Already starting to take off. There's proof in the pudding. Proof in the pudding. 448.99, I said it needed to break. 
We're right above that right now. If that can hold, that'll be great. Now this stock can pull back to these support channels or hide in this area right in here. So we've got this, this, and then this here for your strong supports and a strong buy no lower than 435. Now I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Now when I'm looking at these trades and I'm trying to find resistance levels, means we're here in play pre-market, I'm going to pull this up to the five day. And I'm going to be looking for places in here that I think it can break. But I really did like this area right in here, as I said. And that's where we broke the resistance level. Another one right in here. So I'm going to keep in this trade. I got this position right here. Now, I like this up in here. See, we had that little pullback right there. And she bounced on up. Consolidated again right here. And bounced up. And then she finally just pulled back. <laughs> after the earnings or after the S&P people taking profit. I mean, who would not want to take profit on a spike like this? Uh, I think it was Mr. Basscat in the room. He, he saw this spike and he said, you know, we had that double top. I don't know if that's what he went off of or not, but he said, this is going to pull back. So people had plenty of opportunity with their patience. And I would have just said the same thing. I always, when something's overextended like this, Look at that 50% retracement. Let me show you. I'm going to see if I can find this chart. This is my uh, Fibonacci setup. Automatic Fibonacci's. Now look. Look at this. I talk about this a lot in the room. When you have a huge breakout like this, pull up at Fibonacci. Pull up at Fibonacci from the highest to the low. And take the 50% retracement. Look. Look. Five-day chart. Pulled back. Hit that 50% retracement. Remember that. That's a solid, that's a solid buy signal. Now many times I got many charts that I can go off of. You know, I can I got many charts. And I've you know I've been doing this 16 years. I got many exit plans and many entry plans. But this sucker is gonna keep running up and we're gonna break 500. Now, you want to get in at the bottom? This is a good opportunity right here if you had a Fibonacci set up and you wanted to wait to get into the trade. Wait, have patience, take that 50% retrace. It happens all the time. Happens 90% of the time. These break out and pull back 50%, retrace back up, then consolidate, and then we had the nice little breakout. This sucker... <laughs> Is holding up my support level at 448.99 and we're going to break resistance here real soon probably this week or maybe into next break back up 20 bucks the momentum is going to pile on it's tesla all the way and actually yeah i want to bring it right here to this 465.99 is going to be my triple top resistance to break on tesla well that's it for the aftermarket report i really hope you enjoyed the session we're in a very bullish market. 2021 is set up to really have a spring to it. Four years, the Dow will be at 40,000. Mark my words. I love stocks. Y'all have a great day. Always remember, wait for them pullbacks. Wait for that confirmation on the candlesticks. You see a chart pattern forming, start studying that chart pattern. That's the only time I get into trades. Three times when I'm seeing a pure robotic run. Or I'm seeing a uh, pure body run, or I'm seeing the, um, oh shoot, I'm having flashbacks again. A pure body run, or I wait for them things to pull back and try to find support. So that everybody have a great day, and I love stocks. <laughs>